Hi, my name is Rob Earlham, Senior Developer Advocate here at Sitecore, and this is the next video in a series introducing some of the key concepts for Sitecore Search. We recently implemented Sitecore Search on our developer portal, and that's the project we're going to be covering in this series. Today, we're going to be taking a look at how we're leveraging events and analytics in the site. So, let's dive in. So one part of integrating search into your site is the process of wiring up the different events that need to be dispatched as the users browse through your pages. And doing this creates a kind of a cycle of data flow. The user will request a page that may or may not have data that comes from the search API. And then as the user interacts with the site, events describing those interactions are dispatched back to search. This usage data is then used to personalize any subsequent search data that comes out of the API ensuring that as the user browses through the site, their results they receive get more and more specifically tailored to their prior browsing history. Now, if you're working with the SDK that we discussed in an earlier video, some of these events are gonna be dispatched for you automatically, and you'll need to send some of them yourself. If you're not using the SDK and you're doing a direct API integration, then you're gonna be responsible for wiring up all of these different events at the correct times they need to be dispatched. Alongside tailoring the events for the user's experience on the front end, we then use that event data to build our analytics reports for the marketers on the back end. It gives them deep insights into how the users are interacting with their sites. You can see details on which content pieces are the most popular, view trends on specific content items, and also see detailed reports on key phrase analytics showing exactly what users are searching for on the site. I find this information really useful because you can use that to help identify content gaps that you may need to fill. Okay, so let's take a look at how all of this is implemented on the developer portal. Okay, so I've loaded up the site code documentation site here, and I'm gonna hop straight over to the search documentation. In an earlier video, we talked about the JS SDK that's been released for search. And if we go down to this section at the bottom, here we can find out all the documentation for it. When you use the SDK, Luckily, some of the events you work with are automatically wired up for you. If you're not working with the SDK and you're doing a manual API integration, you're going to have to wire up all of these yourself. But when you're working with the SDK, you can see a lot of these events listed at the top here are all dispatched for you. So they're handled out of the box. If we scroll down, though, we do still have these events at the bottom, which we're responsible for ourselves. A lot of these types of events are handling things like page routing, because that's different in every application, the SDK can't handle that for you itself. So you need to manually make those calls. Luckily, there's a lot of helper functions included in the SDK to make that as simple as possible. I'm gonna hop over to the dev portal repository code base now. And here I've loaded up the app.tsx. When working in a Next.js application, the app.tsx wraps the entire application. That's the main component that everything's loaded inside of. And you can see we have a use effects function here, which means this code gets executed every time this page is called. If we look at line 60 here, we can see we're tracking the entity page views. That means this line here is gonna get called every time a page on the dev portal is loaded. And you can see this is how we're hooking in to track the entity page view event. We're working with content types, and here we pass in the ID, which is the search domain, with the actual path name, just converted into a friendlier version. And that's how we're storing the IDs on the back end. So you can see, really easy to wire up an example of how to manually dispatch an event using the SDK. If we take a look over at one of the components that's in use, we can go and dig into integration, cycle search. Let's take a look at the search results, for example. This is the component that's used to render the search results page. Here you can see we have our articles collection and for each article in there, we're gonna render this LI tag. We have an anchor tag in there, which represents an individual result in the listing. And in here we handle our click event. So we do things like, you know, preventing the default browser click and then we actually register an on-click event through the SDK. Finally, we're doing some actual event dispatching as well. We're doing the track entity page view event again this time passing in, again, the ID of the search result that's been returned to us, allowing us to manually dispatch an event using the SDK over to the CEC. I'm gonna hop back over to the browser now and we can take a look at how this looks in the backend. 
I've loaded up the Customer Engagement Center, or the CEC, which is the back end of Search. And we're looking at the live back end for the Sitecore Developer Portal. All this analytics on the main dashboard are all powered by those event dispatches. The ones manually done by the SDK and the ones that we're handling automatically. So if we go and dig into the analytics section here, we can start to see what kind of data we're getting. And it's really interesting information. You know, we can start to see which of the most popular pages in use on the dev portal, signified by that trigger entity view event. We can see which content items are increasing in usage and which are decreasing in usage. There's a whole heap of different analytics in here you can use. One of my personal favorites is the keyword analysis. This allows us to actually see the specific terms that users are searching for. If we sort by the searches column, here we can start to see which are the most popular searches over the last seven days. So it's things like, you know, people search for a license, special, special character, XM Cloud FAQ. We can see which search terms are increasing in popularity, and we can see which are decreasing in popularity. Another one I quite like is the actual null searches section at the bottom. This shows us all searches which return zero search results. So this is showing us most of the time it happens because of a spelling error. But if you find here there are keywords which are correct, returning zero results, it's probably a good way to help you identify gaps that you have in your content. And you could look at filling those to help users find the information thereafter. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to follow the Discover Sitecore YouTube channel for future videos.